As you can see, I'm currently working on my DIY quadcopter project, which I will probably finish in the year 2022. The heart of the system are those four brushless DC motors, which through the help of the fitting propellers create the uplift necessary to let the quadcopter levitate. I already talked about brushless DC motors, aka BLDC motors, during a basics video of mine. But I missed the chance to talk in detail about so-called ESCs, or electric speed controllers, which directly connect in between the three phases of the BLDC motors and the power source of the system. Simply put, their job is to spin the rotor of the motor with an adjustable speed according to an input signal. But while that is a rather dumbed down explanation of what they do, their hardware construction and control software is everything but simple. So in this two part video series, let's find out how such an EC works and let's try to create our own consisting of an Arduino and a couple of complementary components. Let's get started. First off, I hooked up three oscilloscope probes to the three phases of the motor and sent an input signal to the ESC so that it rotates relatively slow. By the way, the input signal consists of a simple PWM signal with a frequency of 20 milliseconds and an on time of 1 to 2 milliseconds, while 1 millisecond represents the low speeds and 2 milliseconds the high speeds. I created the signal by utilizing the timer 1 of the Arduino microcontroller. But back to topic. The oscilloscope already shows us that this will not be a simple project. But if we think about the overall structure of a BLDC motor, we might be able to understand the voltage curves. Now a BLDC motor consists of three coils, which as we can see are distributed evenly and also tied together in a common neutral point, while their three phases, which I will call A, B and C, are let out of the motor as three wires. This part is called the stator, which obviously stays in place, while the rotor with its many neodymium magnets surrounds the stator and is like the name suggests, the part of the motor that rotates. But to keep the explanation easier later on, I decreased the number of magnets in my illustration to only 4. Now the voltages we have been looking at so far were the voltages between phase AB, phase BC and phase CA. Those are called mesh voltages and are usually a bit harder to grasp since they include two coils simultaneously. It would be easier for us if we could see the voltage across each individual coil which means we have to use the neutral point as a reference voltage, but as I said earlier, only the three phases are let out of the motor, not the neutral point. So to solve this problem, we could add a 10 kilo ohm resistor to each phase and solder them together on the other side to create a virtual neutral point. Now by checking the voltages while the motor rotates, reveals still complicated looking voltage curves, but let's have a closer look at them step by step. First off, phase A is pulled up to the supply voltage, while phase C is pulled down to ground. After pulsing this behavior for a couple of times, which I will talk about in detail later, we can see that there is a phase change, which means that now phase B is pulled to the supply voltage, while phase C stays low. This phase change process then repeated 4 times, each time with a different phase pulled to the supply voltage and ground, before the cycle started over again. So what the ESC basically does is going through 6 steps in which one of the three phases is connected to the supply voltage and one to ground. That means that in each step current flows through two coils, each time with a different direction, which thus creates a changing magnetic field which attracts the magnets of the rotor and therefore creates a complete 360 degrees rotation of the magnets in those 6 steps. But if you have more magnets, like we do, it will take a multiple of the 6 steps. But they will still stay the same. They will only repeat themselves a couple of times. And of course, if we want to increase the rotation speed of the motor, the ESC simply decreases the time for one step and thus increases the frequency of the rotation. 
So now that we know the theory, how does the ESC actually connect the phases to the corresponding voltage potential? By removing the shrinking tube of one of them, we can see the components that handle this job pretty close to the output of the ESC. According to their datasheets, they are N-channel MOSFETs, which are connected to the three phases as three half bridges. This way we can activate a high side one to connect one phase to the supply voltage and activate a low side one to connect one phase to ground and thus create the six different states for the six steps. But because we want to use N-channel MOSFETs for high side switching, we would need a bootstrap configuration to do so. That is why I went with this L6234 three phase motor driver IC, since it combines the three MOSFET half bridges and driver circuitry in a simple to use package. All we need to do is to connect the motor phases to the output pins of the IC and connect its six input pins to the Arduino. So I went ahead and created a first schematic for the project, in which I not only connected the output and input pins of the IC, but also added the complementary components for the bootstrapping, a potentiometer to adjust the rotation speed and five 1 ohm power resistors, which will have an important function for the circuits later on. Now because creating the circuit on a breadboard could turn out to be quite a hassle due to the high current flow, I rather created the circuit on a piece of perf board right from the start. And of course you can find more information about this project like all the schematics, the Arduino code and pictures of my layout design as always in the video description. After 2 hours of soldering, the first test circuit was complete and it was finally time to program the Arduino. As you can see, I started off by creating six functions for the six steps, in which I utilized the port B and port D register to pull the outputs of the Arduino connected to the L6234 IC, high or low. It may look complicated, but once you know that port D basically represents digital pin 0 to 7, port B represents pin A to 13, and 1 means pull the output high and 0 means pull the output low, it is easy to understand. And the input logic of the IC is also well described in the datasheet. If the unable pin is pulled high, a low input activates the low side MOSFET, while a high input activates the high side MOSFET and if the enable pin is low, both MOSFETs are turned off. So after completing the step functions, I configured the timer 1 of the Arduino, so that it creates a timer compare interrupt in a time interval between 80 and 1.6 milliseconds according to the position of the potentiometer. The point of this interrupt is to increase a counter variable called step, which I used in the main loop to switch between the different step functions. And of course, if the step counter reaches the value of 6, it starts over at 0. And additionally, I also added a do once flag so that the output registers do not get rewritten continuously. After uploading the codes, hooking up the three phases of the motor and supplying a voltage of 12 volts to the circuit, we can see that the motor tries to move, but it seems like it is stuck. A first clue to why this is happening can be seen when we have a look at my power supply, which reaches its current limit of 3 amps every half second. And if we monitor the supply voltage with an oscilloscope, we can see how the voltage collapses down to 4 volts, which forces the Arduino to restart. But thankfully though, the problem we are facing here is easy to understand. At first, the Arduino activates step 1 which lets current flow from phase A to phase C. As you might know, coils have a very low resistance, but on the other hand a relatively big inductance. That means that the current through the coils will rise very fast and easily reaches our 3 amp current limit even within the shortest step duration that we said earlier. So what we have to do is to somehow cut off the current rise at a threshold value, so that the current can decrease and then once again rise after a set wait time. And to find out how to implement this current chopping feature and how to improve our DIY ESC even more, make sure to watch part 2 of this project series. Until then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome. Stay creative and I will see you next time.